That's a really good bourbon for the price. But is it really? Hi friends, I'm Laura, this is Troy, we're Baker Drinks, and we've got a little bit of a controversial topic for you today. We're gonna to talk about those whiskeys that everybody loves to promote and talk about on their shows and in the chats and across whiskey tube in general. We're talking about those bottom shelfers. Or Budget bourbons. Hidden gems. Whatever you wanna call them. Are they really good for the price? And we're talking basically below $40. And as you can see, there's there's a few of them in front of us. We own plenty, as do everybody out there that's watching this video and every other channel that you watch as well. But what we really want to talk about is why do we as a whiskey community push this stuff and promote this stuff when at best it's average? I think a lot of it is that it's a starting point. We all started there, so we talk about it, but usually once you get a collection, you start focusing more on better quality stuff and you kind of leave these behind and they just take up shelf space. Yeah, I mean, you would think that that would be the natural progression. People who are new to the hobby want to dip their toe in. They don't want to spend $100 on a bottle they don't know much about, so they buy a bunch of cheaper ones. And I get that. That's a great way to start the hobby if you're not talking to people who know and getting recommendations. We kind of did that ourselves, as you can tell. A lot of these bottles we've had for several years, a lot of them we, we drink and replace, mostly in the form of a mixed drink or a cocktail. Others we got because people raved about them. And you know what? They were usually ones that we were disappointed in because when someone hypes up a bottle, the expectations are that it's a really good bottle. And then people say for the price and it totally changes your thoughts on it because if you have to add that it's really good dot 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 for the price it really make, takes away from it is it is it really good then or is it just it's cheap yeah and i, I don't want to knock on anybody's favorite bottles or their drinking habits or anything that they like to push and promote. Obviously, we've purchased all of these bottles. We own them all. Um, we're, we're not mad that we have any of them. We've spoke highly about a lot of them as well. And <laughs> across the board, all of these bottles taste very good. Mm -hmm. They're delicious. Where they fall short and become average is they lack that complexity, that depth, that viscosity, that mouth experience that you get with- The finish. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And really what Laura and I want to talk about today or hopefully start a discussion about is why do we continue to promote these and push these when for just a little bit more money, you can have something that's head and shoulders better than these. And I have thoughts on it. We've actually got some, some friends of the channel that have their own channels that have put out videos on this exact topic and they have thoughts on it as well. You know, Bourbon Pursuit, they put out a podcast recently in their community roundtable where they talked about this exact same thing. Um, why do we continue to promote average whiskey? And so I kind of got thinking when I keep seeing a lot of these videos pop up, I'm going like, why do we keep promoting average whiskey? Shouldn't we put our focus on brands that are making people want to really expand their horizon? If you've watched any of their stuff, you know, Fred Minnick is a, a big part of their show. And to defend the space and promoting these things, he basically said that we do it for clicks. But someone brought up it's about getting views. Yeah, it, it is about getting views, just like it's about you all selling cases, just like it's about getting people to read Breaking Bourbon, just like it's about people going to Sealbox to to buy. Like YouTube is, is also a place where people do generate ad revenue. And if the more views you get, the more ad revenue you get. You know, people watch those videos a lot more than people watch some $250 bottle that no one else can find. They, they do, but are they the people that have been collecting bourbon for years? and they know what they like and love, and they know what they drink, and they have big collections like we do, are they gonna watch a video on a $30 bottle 
Or is it the brand new people to the space that are curious, they want to know, hey, what can I get for $20, $30 that's going to taste good and not blow out my mouth with, with fire and, and all those things that new drinkers experience. So I, I kind of understand the phenomenon of whiskey channels promoting these things. You know, we like to grow our channels. We like to have new subscribers. We like to have interaction with subscribers mm -hmm. in the form of comments and thumbs up and thumbs down and, and what whatever it is. We like to interact with you guys. And those types of videos seem to get the most interaction for whatever reason. But are we really doing that new drinker a service by saying, go out and buy that $30 or $25 bottle. I don't know, I'm, I'm mixed on it. Cause when we first started drinking, we struggled to drink meat. So of course we would only want to do that with a 20 or $30 bottle. We don't want to do that with a 60, mm -hmm. 70, $80 bottle. Maybe it's a, uh, it's once you've figured out if that you like actually drinking whiskey then you might want to take a step up to something better. I don't think anyone usually stays in that that new realm for a long time. So while you can always find new people that are in that realm of just wanting to try new stuff, they don't stay there that long. I mean, I guess there's those people as well who they find a bottle they like. They don't have a 400 bottle collection. They have a 10 bottle collection. And they do that for various reasons, whether it's uh, they don't have the space to store bottles, they don't have the budget to buy bottles, or they just aren't adventurous and wanting to taste new things. They keep buying the same bottles over and over again. And that's fine. If, if that's who you are, you're probably not watching a channel like ours that does whiskey reviews on a bunch of different things. But if you are, thank you very much. We, we welcome you as well comment and let us know that you're one of those people and, and tell us what you love. We'd love to hear that. But if you want to step up in quality, it, it's not that much more expensive. So maybe you've heard of them, maybe you haven't. Uh, Hello Again Whiskey Friends is another YouTube channel, a uh, friend of Baker Drinks, and they just put out a recent video where uh, Jeff from that channel took a deep dive into data. They, it's, it's three guys. Kelsey, Durrell, and Jeff, who do very extensive reviews. And then they further break it down by price. Now, the, the context of the video that I'm going to share with you, they were showing how price does not equal quality, but they were talking about at a higher price point, above $50 up to above $300 you don't see that big of, a continual um, growth it, it kind of plateaued yes but under fifty dollars there was a very clear correlation between price and quality in fact mm -hmm. under twenty five dollars the average bottle scored a 70. in their rating system there's just so much to it it's not just about flavor like right now we have one of these bottles in our glass and it has good flavor but that's all there is to it. There's no mid palate that's great. There's no finish that's great. There's no mouth feel. You know, all those extra things that you would expect in a high end bourbon. But if you just bump up just, just a little bit to that 60 to $80 range, you really can find a lot more. And to piggyback onto what Laura was just saying, those whiskeys that are scoring a 70 to 73 on average on there, I'm guessing that the value score assigned to that rating was a 10. Oh, I would imagine because it's so, so cheap. So without that value score on there, those were probably all sub 70. And that's just a speculation on my part. I don't know. I didn't see the raw data on them. But it, it would make sense. If something was to score between 0 to 59, just don't drink it. If it's between a 60 and a 69, because these are the budget bourbons, we would call it below average. It might still have some highlights. It might have its own place as a mixer. 70 to 79 is average. And then as you go up from there, 80 to 84 is a really good whiskey. 85 to 89, you start getting into that great territory. And then anything over 90 is just excellent. What we're able to do then with all of this information is to look at the average score and split it then by some price breaks to see if there is a correlation between price and quality. Now, as we work our way up the price points, 
starting with less than $25. You can see that the average score on something that inexpensive is a 70. As you step up then into $26 to $40, still sitting there at a 73, where things then start to escalate is at $41 to $60. If your budget is around $40, $60, $80, $100. You can find high quality, good to great whiskeys. Every single dot that you see on the screen right now represents a review with the price and the score plotted. Can we find something that is scoring in the 80s or higher that costs less than $50? That actually doesn't happen too often. So you can see that they exist here, but the dots aren't as plentiful. It's a lot easier to find standout whiskeys in that 50 to 100 than 50 and below. You can find good to great whiskey anywhere above that $40 price point. It's particularly easier if you're looking to spend 50 to 100 dollars so another friend of, of the channel, uh, Steven over at Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans, about a year ago, he put out a video as well on budget bourbons where he, he basically said, stop buying so much budget whiskey. We are getting into why you need to stop buying so much budget bourbon. It can get to a point where it's too much. Once you've had one, you've had them all. You need to diversify your portfolio. You need more different products you know you need to spend more than 30 dollars on a bottle of whiskey to get more out of it quality over quantity so you need to kind of spend a little bit more money yes you're gonna have less whiskey but you're gonna have overall better whiskey whatever for you is kind of that peak of your value for me it's like the 60 to 80 range i think that's the best value in the bourbon market for price to quality ratio and he gave several points to me seem valid. You know, the first one, once you've had one, you've had them all. I mean, that's a very broad generalization. They don't all taste the same. They all taste pretty different. But I think what he meant was they taste good, but they all lack complexity. It's true across the board amongst all of these. And what do we got, like 20 bottles here? They're, they're not memorable. They're good. We usually pour these when we don't want to think about the whiskey or really enjoy it. We just want to have a drink or a cocktail. It's going in the glass and nobody cares. A, a lot of times we'll use one of these as a control pour when we're going to do like a blind battle. You want something that's exactly 100 proof that's from one of your big legacy distillers. So you have something to gauge what you might be drinking blind. So they do have their uses for us other than just cocktails and mixed drinks. A lot of people, you'll hear them say, what's your warm up pour? And it's typically something like this. And I'm, I'm the opposite. This is my end of the night pour. <laughs> I go backwards <laughs> with my proof points because uh, once I've had a, cup, a drink or two, I can't really necessarily get all the notes and appreciate it as much. So one of these, I don't mind so much because it's cheap. Keep the party going, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another great point that Steven made in his video is just look at how much space this takes up. There's a, lot, a of lot of bottles here that we do not drink often at all. And just housing this many bottles. I mean, you look at some of these and they're, they're mostly full. <laughs> and, Probably on average across the board, $30 a bottle here. Or less. Times 20 bottles, 600 bucks. You could have bought eight bottles in that $80 range that all would have been memorable that we would return to regularly. And it's true, you would have less whiskey, but you would have better whiskey. And I'm a huge believer in quality versus quantity. You know, and, and every time we do something like this, you got that person out there, oh, I would rather have two Wild Turkey 101s versus, you know, one Russell's pick. Well, first of all, we're not volume drinkers. It may look like it, but we, we are not. We like variety, we like quality. But back to my point of, I would rather have three bottles of this versus one of that. I, I, I don't know, I kind of equate it to would I rather eat a ribeye steak or have two cheeseburgers? Two I, cheap cheeseburgers. I, I would <laughs> rather have a ribeye steak. So e equate that how you will. I mean, we're, we're not trying to tell you what to do. We're not trying to 
piss anybody off or lose subscribers or, or any of that kind of stuff. <laughs> we, we might. It's, it's just the nature of what we do here. When you have a controversial subject, and again, people have very strong visceral reactions when you start talking bad about a whiskey they love. And we're not talking bad about any of these. Like I said, they all taste very good. They just lack complexity. There's a reason why they cost what they cost. They're usually younger, usually lower quality, and, and the distillers acknowledge that, so they can't put a bigger price tag on them. <laughs> these are the ones that, that are on the bottom shelf. They're there for a reason. Whether you're a volume drinker and, and you're just going in and you're looking for that $7 pint and you're out until the next day, and again, if you're that person, you're probably not watching this YouTube video. But if you're that guy that, that every payday, every two weeks, you wanna go down and get a bottle and you grab that old Forester 100 every time because that's tried and true and, and you love it and you know what you're getting, that's fine too. More power to you. I hope you never run out of that old Forester 100. But if you ever want to explore something better, or, you know, we're, we're here to kind of help facilitate that by just letting you know some of the data surrounding the quality of a whiskey at a certain price point. There's clear correlation that if you want to spend $50 up to about $100, the quality increases exponentially. The average score above $50 was 82. That's 10 points higher. And if you are a collector and have them on shelf, whether, whether you drink them or not, you probably don't need 20 <laughs> lower shelf bottles. I don't have a use for that many of them. I'm not sure what to do with them, actually. Yeah, I mean, back to that Bourbon Pursuit podcast I was talking about, Ryan basically was saying he's got a bunch of these bottles that he bought six years ago that he's getting ready to dump out because he just don't drink them anymore. People will say early times is great. It is fine. I bought all these bottles myself and they are there and I'm about to dump them out because they've been there for six years. And that was six bottles that I could have took a chance on, on a small mid craft size producer. And I'm sure we're probably never going to dump these out, but this this group of bottles here represents a, a portion of our whiskey that we're going to sit on a long time because it's not very often we grab these. It's typically in, like like I said before, a mixed drink or a cocktail. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you have any final thoughts on this subject? I'd say think about what whiskey you're buying and make sure it's a good one. For 15 to $20 more, you can have a much better bottle Yes, you're gonna have less whiskey, but you're gonna have better whiskey. If you like this content, let us know. If you hated this content, also let us know in the comment section. Like or dislike, comment and subscribe. We'll see you again soon. Cheers. <laughs>